Welcome to the Social Mission Revolution. Each week we explore some of the greatest undertold stories of businesses and everyday people who are making their ultimate impact in the world through social mission. This is Social Mission Revolution and this is your host, Andrea Putting. Welcome to another episode of the Social Mission Revolution podcast. I'm here today with Johan Nagera, and I'm really excited to have Johan on because I know that he is making a massive impact on the world with, with the work that he does and his deep commitment to social mission. So welcome, Johan. Thank you very much. Would you like to share with us a bit about, about your work and what you're doing? Yes, for sure. So I'll give you a quick history. One, I have a digital agency. Two, a software company. And three, a business which is now my legacy. It's called Business Authorities. So in the software company, we went from zero to, we have 92 people now. And we service a lot of um, the government, uh, other platforms that we build for people. And it's a pretty, it became a pretty big company. It started off something small. And from that, um, I walked away from it three, three years ago because I had no passion for it anymore. And my, my GM uh, runs it and everything's going good there. So it was good to be able to build a business where I could step away and then work on something that I wanted to. Accidentally built a software company because... Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I was, I was living in living in this building and every day I kept getting a piece of paper under my door saying, hey, you know, your, your windows are getting clean, your carpets are getting clean. And I said, oh, some system must be broken. But it turned out that that was their announcement system. So I went up to the building manager and said, hey, why don't I build an app for the building? He said, oh, I don't know what that looks like. I showed him. And from that, we started a company, which then now most of the buildings that you see coming up in Melbourne have uh, systems in there. So that company went from zero. That, that was a six-year journey, by the way. I make it sound easier than it was. <laughs> <laughs> Never quite that easy, is it? <laughs> yeah. So from, in six years, uh, three years of it was hard work and pain. And then the next three years was I teamed up with um, me and that business partner. We'd split up and he retired. So it was split up as in he was you know, retired. Yeah. Cool. These new business partners, they said, hey, Johan, we want to build a company and we want to take it to $100 million. And now at this stage, I've gone, $100 million? Are you serious? Like, do you know how much pain I have with running these my stuff? And, at, you know, I think we were just at about a million dollar profit back then. And to think about a $100 million company just blew my mind. Uh, but I said, let's go on. Let's go on this journey. And in three years, we got to $20 million. So that was pretty huge. And it only took us two days a week. So the thing that I learned from there was the reason the second company was so much more successful compared to the first company was we had an end in mind. We knew exactly where we wanted to go and how we were going to get there. So every decision that we made allowed us to work towards our goal. Mm -hmm. So it was a strategic business. And, you know, we're, we're going to get there in the next three years, which is great. So from that... We've been, we've been consulting with businesses for the last 14 years. Uh, that's, you know, in the digital agency, that's what we do. We help them build their presence, grow their companies, and then help them to scale. But we never actually put down a strategy for it. So that's sort of how the business authorities formula came about. And then last year, I had a couple of friends who had, um, well, their businesses were suffering, so they took their own lives. And, but they wouldn't have had to do that if they knew that there was another way out. I mean, mm. my philosophy in business is you're only one deal away from changing your entire, you know, your the legacy. Yep. So and so, yeah, and so to, to create, to have that happen was a tragedy. And so then people started saying, you need to share this, you need to share this. And I started sharing it with some of my clients. And this business has started going through the roof. And so other people said, you need to teach this. You need to teach this. <laughs> and I said, okay, cool. So we decided to run this conference in February. And it was a conference where there was... Now, I started going to conferences. There's another little side story here. Because I haven't been to any conferences in, in many, many years. And all I saw was basically people get baited in 
to a conference to, for $27, $97, whatever it is. And then when you get there, they're trying to upsell you and pitch you, but they don't actually, that's fine about the, the upselling and stuff like that, but they don't actually give you the ingredients of how to build, how to apply that into your business. Yeah. Absolutely. So I wanted to, I wanted to do something different. I said, Hey, I rounded up 10 of my most you know, trusted people who could speak on every one of those topics. We went through a selection criteria. We went through about 60 people to distill it down to 10 people. And the mission on the day was one thing. They, there was no pitching and it was 100% content and just giving them, giving the audience their best value and the, the strategy that they could implement in their business that night. So that was the theme of the conference. And we, we sold out at 150 tickets. Mm. People came there and you were one of them. Oh, it was remember. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it yeah. was a brilliant conference. And there's still a lot of material there that I need to sit down and go through. <laughs> yes. Well, there's, there's, you know, a year's worth of work in, yeah. in that because you can literally implement one strategy. It'll, it'll take you a week. It'll take you a month. depends on how fast you are. But it helps your business grow, so build, grow, and scale. So that's a little bit about what I do. So that's the, the third company is called Business Authorities. And, yeah, so that's, that's my legacy. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm going to ask you my question that I ask everybody. What, if there was one thing that you could fight for, what would it be? I fight for the business owner. Mm -hmm. That is my mission. I believe that, I believe that the world is, is run and the world changes because advances, I should say, because of business owners. It doesn't change, it doesn't advance because of governments and the policies that they create. It's actually the innovators of business who change the world. And that's why I fight for. Now, those people, unfortunately, business is a very, very um, isolated game. Mm -hmm. People are on all different parts and different trajectories, and they feel like they're alone. And sometimes there's, you know, I've got a stack of books on my desk. There's about 30 books that I bought in the last month. I haven't had time to go through all that, but you know, time is, uh, time is against us because you could, you could go read, you could learn, you have to implement, you have to do HR, you have to do advertising, you have to do marketing, recruitment, all of these things. So what I wanted to do, what, who do I fight for? The small business owner. And I want to help them learn that they can actually build, grow and scale into an empire if they have the right systems in place. Awesome. As, as a small business owner and having, this is my second, I had a business years ago and yeah, so I understand that the, there is this enormous potential but you get lost in the everyday stuff with yes. no time to, to do that. And I really believe that the business owners are, are the leaders of the world of the, and especially in this work, in social mission, I think they're the ones who are going to make the big difference in the world, which is why I do what I do. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you involve social mission in your work. For sure. In your businesses. So we got involved with social mission accidentally. And when I say accidentally, it was my wife. My, my wife is amazing i think you've met her before she's run um you know charities she's the president of a couple of different communities they build wells in south america in africa and you know she's 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 a philanthropist mm -hmm. i make money she knows <laughs> she knows how to, do how to good... use it <laughs> exactly Honestly. that's right and so she's she called me up one day and she said honey i need you to cancel your schedule tomorrow so and she's never, ever asked me that before. I said, wow, that's, I go, what are we doing? She goes, oh, we're going to drive out to Lilydale. We're going to pick up this guy and we're going to take him to the airport. I said, well, isn't that what Uber is for? Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, 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 you, trust me, you're going you're gonna to love this. I said, all right, cool, done. So we drive out there and, you know, we have a great talk on the drive out there. And she tells me about this guy, Paul Dunn. Now, I'd never met Paul Dunn before. And I'm like, okay, cool. Really interesting from what she's told me. Pick him up. And within 10 minutes, we became best friends. 
And from there, he said, Johan, I see what you're doing. And this is, you know, this is the future of the world. You know, why are you actually doing this? It's so that you can create a better, a better world for your children. Isn't that right? I said, yes, that's right. I go for them, for their generations. And mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, it's not about the money. It's about the world that we live in. And, you know, there's, there's so many different uh, aspects that I know we've only, <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole just yet. Yeah. So, so from there, um, he came, he told me about B1G1 and I said, wow, that is, it blew me away. The fact that, you know, they've come up with this concept, they've, in, they've used it and it's been working for the last, I think it's 12 years, seven years, 12 years, one of those numbers. And mm. it's amazing what it does. And so we had our first lunch and I said, hey, Paul, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to be part of this. How do we be part of this? And so he said, okay, he's going to zoom in and he's going to talk. And we donated, you know, Kyoko, my wife, went in there and she said, okay, you know, for every, every person who buys a ticket, there's going to be three kids in Malawi who get access to e-learning. There's three kids in India who get access to uh, microfinance. There's mm-hmm. women who get to learn about all this stuff. And, and it's amazing because you don't actually think about the impact of those dollars that happens to, to us. Twenty dollars, fifty dollars doesn't yeah. really make a difference in our lives, but to it's them, small, it's small change usually, yeah. isn't it? That makes a big difference. Exactly, and that that compounds because once you change one person's life, it has a ripple of effect, and then they change more people's lives. And so, even though you've only paid fifty dollars for them to learn for a whole year, you know, um, it's transforming that community. So. It opened up my eyes to this thing, and then so from there, um, you know, Paul Dunn came on, came came to our event and said, "Hey guys, congratulations from what you did at that lunch. You created, you influenced, and helped sixty five thousand people." I said, wow. wow, that that was that was huge. We had eighty two yeah. a year, and sixty five thousand people were influenced. I said, "That that's amazing." Now, from our event, the main event, when the results came in, I spoke to the other founders of the business and said. I want to match what we've done and I want to create a bigger impact than what we're doing. And everybody jumped on board. So from that one event, we had 10 speakers. We had 150 attendees. We made a million 70,000 impacts. And it's, yeah. it's That's an, incredible. An incredible feeling for you too, to, to know that through you doing what you're best at doing working at your potential, helping the people that you can directly help. You're also helping over a million people. That's, and and it's, not about, it's not about how good we are. It's about, hey, it's, it's actually getting the message out there. There's so many people who are listening to your podcast right now. All of them, I know, you know run events or contribute in, in some mm-hmm. shape or form. If they can help 150 people, over the one year, that's another million lives that gets impacted. Yeah. And it's just, it's incredible when you start thinking about it, how our small little contributions can make a big difference. Yeah, it is, it is just amazing. And so how does this now impact the way that you do business? Or let's put this, just thinking, how does it impact your business? But... You're, you are encouraging, you're working with business owners. So how does it impact the way that you work with them? It, it's completely changed the way we do mm. business. We only do business with people who are going to be doing business for good. Yeah. Business for good. Um, you know, one of the people that we've, we talked to, they said, oh, my God, I didn't know that this thing existed. And they, they build land, you know, across yeah. the they build houses, they build suburbs. And they said, now, because of what I said to them, they've gone in and they've, they've signed up and they're going to be doing for every block of land that they sell, a new well gets built. Now, one block of land in each one of these, you know, each yeah. one of these Estate. developments. Yeah. Can, you, can you think of how many blocks of land there are? There's, you know, 200, 300, 500. And so they've now made it their mission to impact 650 million people. And then how does that also impact the homeowners knowing that, that their block of land, them buying their block of land has helped to build a well in a place where they had no water? Exactly. How awesome is that? 
I'd love to be that. able to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it all happens with commu uh, uh, communication. They didn't know that this existed. I never knew that this existed. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the, the government gets a lot of my tax money. Now we can give a little more away and create a better world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yes. So in this, what do you find when you look back at the businesses, how do you see that that impacts business on a bigger scale? I mean, in, within the business. For sure. The way people feel yeah. about their work. I, I see different, I see a generational change. We employ, um, we employ, I call them the youngins, but <laughs> <laughs> so my brain was like, oh, oh I would too. <laughs> they're, they're the young ones. They're the ones who were born in the nineties, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. We were driving, driving around the other day and I saw this, I saw an American muscle car and I said, oh, wow, wouldn't it be great to own that? And the guy in the car with me said, no way in hell I would ever you know, buy that. I said, oh, why not? Because, well, it's destroying our planet and you know, fossil fuels, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I went, wow, never even thought about that because I grew up in a different generation. And so these guys, the young ones, now make it a, a, a they're more driven by purpose than by money. Yeah. When we share with them why we're doing what we're doing, they get on board. Mm. And they will do what they need to do to get stuff done because of the vision, because of the mission, because of the purpose that we have in the company. And so it, you know, it's, it's not about the money with them. It's about, hey, they go and talk to their friends. This is what we're doing in our company. And this is why we're doing it. And again, it's a, not only a talking point, but the fact that everything that we do is tracked, tested and measured. You can go on the website and see how many impacts we've made and they can donate to the different causes and, um, you know, different causes that they, they want to support. It makes a big difference to them. Yeah, and I've always, it's something that comes up time and time again with people who are, who are using B1G1 as their social mission outlet is that you can find particular projects that are completely in alignment with, with, what, you, with what you do so that, when a business owner gives something to help other business owners or someone who's involved in education helps with education. And I spoke to someone who is, who is um, an Aboriginal fashion design company. And so they help, they use that to use Aboriginal communities and help them to grow. So there's something for everyone that you would relate to that's in alignment with your values and your mission your, as your business. Yes. It um, makes giving a lot easier, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. And, and I believe all humans thrive on giving. We do. We get yeah. significance out of giving. We get contribution out of giving. When, when I make somebody else's life better, and it's mm. not just by giving them money, by giving them knowledge, information, sharing what I know with them, they're better. Yeah. That's, that's a form of giving. Yep. Brain scans show that what is as pleasurable as having sex is being altruistic. So I think it's, it's inbuilt within us and it's what helps us to grow and develop as, as people. Yeah. It's really important. So if you had some advice to give other, to, well, to business owners, which is what you do all the time, who are wanting to incorporate something special into their business to help them to be to grow and be more scalable and to start giving, what advice would you, would you have for them? Sure. So one bit of advice, well, <coughs> actually many, bit, many bits of advice. Number one, stick in there. You're going to, you're here, you're doing what you do because you love it. Two, add a purpose into why you're doing what you do, because mm -hmm. no matter what, you're going to have some shit days. When you have some shit days, when you wake up and you see why you're doing what you're doing, your, it should be plastered all over your wall. It, it energizes you. You jump out of bed because you know the fact that you're waking up is going to make a big difference. Yeah. Three, share that with everybody. Talk to everybody about what you do and why you do it. 
and the right people will come on board. The people who don't care about that, that's fine. That's the filter. Hmm. That, you don't need them in your life. That's all good. Number four, make sure you put your oxygen mask on yourself first before trying to help other people. Now, when I say that, it's because the people who, I've seen a lot of people trying to give everything to everybody and trying to help everybody around them, but they don't help themselves. Yeah. Therefore, they're doing themselves a disservice because if they are completely depleted, I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about, you know, your everything, everything that keeps, not just money, I'm talking about your life force. Yeah. When you give to people all the time and not recharging yourself, you're going to get depleted really quickly and then you cannot give as much. Whereas, so that's, that's a, Mm -hmm. issue that I see with people who are giving way too much in terms of their time and energy. So please, you know, recharge yourself, give yourself that time because when you have clarity and you work towards your purpose, you can have a much greater impact in this world. Absolutely. I agree with that completely. I have a little saying that I remind myself every now and then when I start giving to the world, <laughs> everything that I have to, in order to say yes, I have to learn to say no. Yes. So it's about understanding where I can give my, myself the greatest impact rather than spreading myself too thin and that way I will be better for the world. <laughs> so I want everyone to do that. You'll learn how to say no in yes. order to make, the, make your ultimate impact in the world. One of, one of my friends, he... Um was carrying around this big thick book and it was this thick mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the cover it said learn how to say no and i went wow <laughs> okay you're gonna read all of that just to learn how to say no because this guy he'll he'll he work 16 hours a day mm -hmm. and help other people but he doesn't know how to say no and <laughs> so that book i said i'd rather just say no than read that <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm going to have an impact on the world, I say need to say no to that book <laughs> because it's, I've got too much on to read that book. <laughs> awesome. So is there anything else I can share before we end today? Yeah, just if you'd like to share something about, give a bit of a pitch for, for anything in particular for, for your business and for, for the social mission revolution movement, I'd like you to have that opportunity. Right. No, so I don't need, don't need to pitch, but come join our community. See what yep. we do. Go to Facebook, type in business authorities. I assume you'll know how to spend, spell business authorities. I'll, so, put a link. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a link up there. Business authorities or go to businessauthorities.com and then come join our community and see what we're doing. Awesome. That's awesome. fabulous. Fantastic. Yes. All right, then. Thank you so much for having me on here. Yes, and thank you so much for your time, Johan. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. And I'm sure everyone's enjoyed listening to what you do and how you do it and, and to, to hear and see your passion for, for your work and for making that impact in the world. A pleasure. So, and so thank you again for joining me on another episode of the Social Mission Revolution. And next week we'll have another Social Mission Revolutionist to inspire your day. This has been the Social Mission Revolution with Andrea Putting. Join me again next week when we'll speak to another social mission revolutionist who will inspire you on your journey to making your ultimate impact on the world.